Hi everyone, welcome back to a Tactical Thursday episode. Today we're gonna be talking about the keys to an effective analytics portfolio. So of course I'm gonna pose this question to you because you are the analyst in the room. Mm -hmm. So what would you say are the keys to an effective analytics portfolio? So I think there are two main things that you need to get across. Number one is that you need to show that you can solve a business problem using data. And I would say number two is that it would be ideal if you were solving that business problem with a relevant tool. So if you're applying for a Tableau job, mm -hmm. build out a Tableau public portfolio, solving a problem with data that you have access to. Okay, and maybe even data that would be relevant for this particular position. Exactly. So if you're going for a marketing position, marketing data. Right. Okay, I got it. So let's say I'm somebody that is just starting out and I wanna build my portfolio, whether I'm a mid-level professional or I'm just starting out an entry-level person, how would I do that? What would you suggest that I do to build my portfolio? Okay, so I intentionally brought up Tableau Public because I think they're the best show in town in terms of you get to host your profile for free, and also if you go on Tableau Public, you can find a visualization you like, download it, and then you have access to that data. So if they're already doing some marketing analysis on some anonymized marketing data source, you then have that baked in to when you download that Tableau workbook from Tableau Public. Okay, so that's great because I feel like that would be a big question that would come up is sort of how do I get data? Where can right. I find it? And it, Tableau Public allows you to source that data essentially. Oh yeah, or you could just take one of my courses. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, getting back to courses are actually a legitimate way of not only are you going to get the data file, but you can also get instruction on how to approach the analysis. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you don't have to take my course, although, I mean, I would love it if you guys did. But I would say you can get a Udemy course for... It, they're constantly on sale for anywhere from like seven to fourteen dollars and that is the data source the training and then you get your output so that's a great way to kind of you can almost think of those like Udemy courses as like portfolio starters mm -hmm. yeah so that's another way that you could start your portfolio get this up and running right what about I mean I assume some people are not going to use Tableau public but I think you could create a website as another option or you could even screenshot some of your analysis um, and put it on a website put it in a blog post so there are other ways to create portfolios. yeah so Power BI is a great example they don't have a public portfolio hosting setup. Mm -hmm. But what I have seen is are people taking screenshots and then put, posting GIFs into like a LinkedIn article mm -hmm. that, that they wrote and then they can kind of walk through. Um, it's not as, I would say, polished as Tableau Public, but if you're applying for a Power BI job, then that would be a really smart way to show. Because I, getting back to the actual value of a portfolio, if you're getting hired and you can check all the boxes and you could just be lying your face off. Mm -hmm. So them seeing a portfolio that you built, I think goes a long way in giving you credibility. I agree. I also think it is that age old adage, show don't tell. So right, right. I could tell you all day that I'm great at this particular skill, but a portfolio actually shows the hiring manager and it shows the work that this person can do. So it's more powerful in some ways. Mm -hmm. And you're right, it does validate, legitimize, you know, if I come in and say, I'm excellent at Tableau, I am a master Tableau user, and then my portfolio does not reflect that, it sort of is a BF's barometer too. Right, true. You could also see a portfolio as an engine to get, to bring you opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we've interviewed Michael Galarnik, who he gets about, I think, 250,000 hits on his data science blog. And he now has more opportunity coming to him than he could ever actually capitalize within a lifetime. Sure, yeah, so that's another good point. I mean, for anybody out there who's wanting to go into more of the consulting route or start their own business, 
that's another excellent point is potentially a portfolio can be something that showcases your abilities and you can show it to a client. You could post it publicly and get some recognition for that. Oh, and we can also talk about Chris Quas, which we totally botched this. So we, starting this podcast, we actually got someone their first analytics job. What we didn't do is like do a good job of cap- capturing that process on film. But I will say this, he built a Tableau public profile or a portfolio analyzing fantasy football data. Mm-hmm. So that is an excellent way of taking something that you're passionate and you are, because I mean, fantasy football is basically like data analysis for sports. And then he just turned that to a visualization and that helped him get his first job. Yeah, I think that's an excellent example of where we have interest married with um, professionalism, married with a portfolio so that you can get your next opportunity. So that's a wonderful example. And you're right, we did not capitalize <laughs> on recording, Chris, but maybe next time we have some things. Yeah, about. I was about to say, let, taking portfolio advice from people who did not portfolio I themselves know, well. I <laughs> know, we didn't do it well, but you can learn from our mistakes. True, right, because <laughs> I think we would have more subscribers if we had kind of that narrative structure. Mm-hmm. I think that what we're doing now does make sense, mm-hmm. but they're kind of one-offs to where like within a portfolio piece, you can kind of also show your progression as an analyst too. Mm-hmm. So maybe the first one or two portfolio pieces aren't that great, but maybe you start to show improvement. And that's a way that you can kind of getting back to like showing, not telling. This is where I started. This is where I am now. And it's like that communicates so many different things to your hiring manager. Like, number one, this person knows what they're doing. Number two, I'm not going to have to, you know, micromanage them. They're going to do the work on their own. Right. Yeah. I think there are so many valuable aspects of having a portfolio. And I think if anything that you learn from this episode, learn this. Create a portfolio. It will be to your advantage. You will certainly have more opportunities coming your way if you're able to showcase your skills. Show them instead of talking about them. Um, I mean, you're going to have to talk about them too. We'll talk about that in another episode, but you're going to have to talk about them, but we also want you to show them because it brings you clout. It brings you sort of that verification that you can do the skills you're talking about. I think we sort of nailed this episode. I think that's it. So thanks everybody. We will see you next time.